Ethan Hound is a remarkable survivor from the days when the Egyptians ruled much of the known world. The Ibethan Hound of today is hardly different from its hunting ancestors of 5,000 years ago, and the breed is still cherished for its loyalty and companionship. Representations of dogs virtually identical to modern-day Ibethan Hounds have been found in Egyptian tombs from as long ago as 3400 BC. The famous statue of Anubis from King Tut's tomb is thought to be modeled from an Ibethan Hound. The Ibethan Hound traveled with Phoenician traders throughout the Mediterranean. But it was on the island of Ibethan that the breed became permanently established, with its primary function there to hunt rabbits. The first Ibethans arrived in the United States in the mid-1950s, and the breed gained American Kennel Club recognition as of January 1979. You'll be seeing many Ibethan hounds during this presentation. Some are outstanding examples of the breed. Others are less so. But all will help your understanding of the Ibethan hound. Now, let's begin. The Ibethan hound is a gracefully built, strongly muscled hunting dog, capable of tremendous speed and agility. The Ibethan hound is a rangy dog with clean, fine bone and should never appear coarse or cumbersome. His large ears and oblique amber eyes give him a keen, intelligent expression. And he is known for his frisky, playful temperament. Dogs should stand between 23 and a half and 27 and a half inches at the withers. Bitches from 22 and a half to 26 inches. Body length from sternum to point of buttocks is somewhat longer than the height at the withers in both dogs and bitches. As for weight, dogs should average 50 pounds, while bitches can range between 42 and 49 pounds. Animals which are slightly over or under these ranges should not be penalized if the dog's overall type and conformation are of excellent quality. Let's begin our detailed examination of the Ibethan hound by studying the Ibethan's distinctive head. It's long and narrow and resembles a cone truncated, that is, cut off or squared off at its base. It is extremely dry fleshed with no loose skin. Proportionately, the skull and muzzle are of equal length, measured from tip of nose to eyes and from eyes to occiput. There is little definition of stop. Too abrupt a stop is incorrect. No stop at all is also not correct. You can see that the skull is long and flat, while the muzzle is elongated, fine, and slender. The Ibethan muzzle is not absolutely flat. There is a slight rise of the nasal bone just before the nose leather, giving a slight Roman nose outline. From the front, you can see the lines of the head are clean and free of any excess skin or cheekiness. Note also the narrow brow. What about this head? It appears too heavy in the skull, and the cheekiness masks the clean, elegant lines so characteristic of the breed. And here, the skull is too rounded. Remember, the skull should be long and flat. This head is correctly proportioned and is long and narrow as called for in the standard. Remember, the head should form a sharp cone truncated at the base. The nose should be prominent and extend beyond the lower jaw like this. The Ibethan hound's flesh-colored nose seen here should harmonize with the color of the coat. Equally acceptable is a butterfly nose. The nostrils should be open. The teeth should meet in a scissors bite like this and should be white and well set. As with any hunting hound, full dentition is desired. The jaws are exceptionally strong and lean and the lips are thin and tight. The ears are one of the most distinctive features of the breed. They're prominent prick ears and always rigid. 
carried forward when the dog is alert like this. They are extremely mobile and expressive of mood, sometimes pointed forward, sideways, or backwards. See how the center of the base of the ear is at the level of the eyes. This means that the ears broaden above the base, like this. See how the leather is thin and fine. The ear is always rigid. There should be no hair inside the ear. Note that the widest part of the ear is not at the base, but about one-third of the distance up from the base. These ears are incorrectly shaped. They do not broaden above the base. These ears are not rigid, as required by the standard. A correctly set and shaped ear, like this, helps create the typical Ibethan expression seen here. These eyes are correct. They're oblique and small, and range in color from clear amber, like these, to caramel. Green, brown, or blue eyes are not correct. The eyes can reflect an intelligent, alert, and inquisitive expression. These rounder, larger eyes are not desirable. You can see how they affect this dog's expression. These light eyes also distort expression. Here again is a correct Ibethan head and expression. Alert, intelligent, curious and questioning. Now let's consider the Abethan Hound's neck and forequarters. The neck is long, slender, and slightly arched like this. The neck should be strong, but the musculature should lie flat, as seen here. There should be no bulging. The neck should blend smoothly into the withers. This short, thick, over-muscled neck is not correct. Neither is this U-neck. This correct neck is long and slender, and is strong without appearing heavily muscled. You can see how it blends gracefully into the withers and shoulders. Shoulders themselves are sloping and well laid back. When viewed from the side, the shoulder blades and upper arms should be of approximately equal length. The Abethan standard calls for a straight front, but this refers to straight legs, not a lack of angulation. The angulation of the front should balance that of the rear for efficient movement. There is a prominent breastbone. This breastbone is not prominent, which is incorrect. From the front, you can see that the chest is deep and well-fitted between the front legs. This chest is too narrow and shallow. The elbows point out rather than lying close to the body. The forelegs are strong, straight, and close, lying flat to the chest and forming a straight line to the ground. The forearms are very long. There should be clean, fine bone and well-developed sinews. The brisket should be deep, but not to the elbow. The lowest point of the chest should reach nearly to the elbow. Pasterns are strong and flexible. The Abethan has a hare foot with toes long and closed. The feet must be very strong with durable pads. This dog is down in pastern, indicating weakness. This dog is too straight in front. This is the proper front assembly for the Abethan Hound. The long forearms give the dog tremendous reach in front and helps him cover a lot of ground with minimum effort. The Abethan Hound's body is characterized by a level, straight back. It should be taut, yet elastic and flexible. Ribs are flat and carried well back to the slightly arched, strong, short loin of medium breadth, and will be apparent in a dog in top working condition like this. 
The length of body, measured from point of chest to point of buttocks, is somewhat longer than the dog's height at the withers. The underline is somewhat tucked up at the flank, as seen here. This dog is too long in loin for optimum strength and efficiency. What about this dog's body? The top line is roached. Ibethans must have a level, straight back. The top line must not be rigid, however. It must have flexibility and elasticity when the dog is in motion. This top line sags, which is undesirable. This body is correctly proportioned, with a level straight back, slightly arched loin, and flat ribs. See how the rump, or croup, slopes slightly to the set on of the tail. The tail is long and set rather low. The tail carriage will vary with the dog's mood. It's highly mobile and carried in a sickle or a ring or like a saber. This is a low set tail on a steep croup. This croup is too flat. The tail does not come off smoothly. This tail is correctly set rather low on a slightly sloping croup. Hindquarters should be strong and flat muscled, with moderate angulation at the stifle. The hocks are strong, low, and well let down. These hindquarters are over-angulated and out of balance with the dog's front assembly. This is a straight rear, lacking the strong muscle that makes the Abethan hound such a remarkable runner. These hindquarters are correct, being moderately angulated with strong, flat muscling. From the rear, see how the hocks are low set and parallel to each other. The Abethan must never be cowhocked. Like the front feet, the rear feet are hair-shaped with long, closed toes and thick, durable pads. Protective hair should be present between the toes, but not as obvious as feathering. Now let's discuss the Abethan Hound's coat. There are two types. The short coat, which is shorter on the head and ears and longer at the thighs and under the tail. And the wire-haired coat. The wire-haired coat can be from one to three inches in length with hair longer on the back, back of the thighs, and tail. There may also be a generous mustache. In either case, the coat must be hard in texture. There may be a fine undercoat. Although the short-haired coat is most commonly seen, both types of coat are equally acceptable, and neither should take preference over the other. As for color, any shade of red, from yellowish red, sometimes referred to as lion, to deep red, in any combination with white, are the most commonly seen coat colors. Solid white or solid red, though perfectly acceptable, are relatively rare. All other colors are excluded. Any color other than white or red is to be disqualified. Color is usually divided on the head, with a diamond-shaped spot above the eyes and between the ears. This is sometimes referred to as an axe mark or as a third eye. In any case, distribution of white and color, referred to as markings or a pattern over the body, is of little importance, as long as the color itself falls within the range described in the standard. Most commonly seen is a dog that is predominantly red with white feet and socks, tail tip, chest, and muzzle. There is also usually a blaze on the forehead. 
The Ibethan hound has always been prized for his elegance, ease, and grace of movement. Proper gait is this elegant and flowing trot. Walking or trotting, the breed is very light on its feet, never cumbersome nor plodding. There should be smooth reach in front and strong drive from behind. Coming toward you, the front legs should reach straight forward and should not be thrown out to the side, nor should they cross. And going away, see how the rear legs move in a straight line behind the front legs, remaining parallel to each other. This dog is cowhawked and is crossing in the rear. This dog is sidewinding and crossing in front. This dog is out of balance and is overreaching. This correct movement is graceful and elegant and can only stem from correct conformation. In the field, the Abethan moves with great speed and agility and has been clocked as fast as 40 miles an hour in racing competitions. He is without equal in high jumping and broad jumping ability. Your judging of the Abethan Hound should be based on one point, preservation of type. The Abethan Hound is one of the few breeds which has been carefully protected from temporary fashion or artificially produced traits for some 5,000 years. These are the identical dogs known to the ancient world, kept pure and true to type for 50 centuries. Competition in the show ring or in the field should serve to carry on this tradition. Graceful, even-tempered, affectionate, and loyal, the Abethan Hound is a living link to the past and must be preserved as such for future generations. <laughs>